So this time would say no, that's not the case. If it was yes, then no credit. Okay. So were your payments made to your spouse or to the part to to the parent of your qualifying person who is your qualifying child and under age 13? So generally you can't make the payment to a spouse or to the parent of your qualifying person who is your qualifying child under age 13. So the answer would have to be no there to be continuing on. Next, were your payments made uh, to your child who was under the age of 19 at the end of the year? So again, that's kind of like you're paying it to a family member. So if your family member is now dependent, they're a child, I mean, independent, they're a child, they're doing their own thing now, then maybe that would, you know, that could be a different situation. But obviously if they're still, you know, a, a dependent child, then you would think that would be a funny situation. You'd be paying them, which you might do anyways, and then trying to get a credit for the payment that you were made to the child, which seems to not quite be right. So once again, were your payments made to your child who was under the age of 19 at the end of the year? We'd have to say no. We're going to continue on. Are you single? So here's where it gets a little bit messy down here. So are, are you single? Uh, if yes, we can continue down below. If no, we're going to continue to the to the right hand side. Let's continue. Let's go with yes, being single first. So we're going to say, are you single? We'll say yes. And then next one, uh, do you know the care provider's name, address and identification number? Now, hopefully the answer there is yes. You know who you know who's doing the care. You know their name, address and identification number. If it's somebody that if it's a caretaking facility, they should give you that in the form of an EIN. If not, it should be a social security number generally. So normally you would be going down to here. Did you have more than one qualifying person? If the answer is yes, you may be able to claim the child and dependent care credit. Fill out form 2441. But if the answer is no, then the question is, are you excluding or deducting at least 3000 of dependent care benefits? Because if you're excluding them, if they're not being included in income, then if you also took the credit for it, you'd kind of be double dipping in that situation. So if the answer is no, once again, you may be able to claim the child and dependent care credit. If the answer is yes, you can't claim the credit. All right, let's move back up here. And then imagine now we're going from single to saying, no, we're not single. And then the next question is, are you filing a joint return? So if the answer is yes, we continue on as we generally would. If the answer is no, you've got that married filing separate situation because if you're married, you can only file joint or separate usually. So do you meet the requirements to be considered unmarried? So in other words, a situation where you're kind of like separated because if you're filing married filing separate, normally you wouldn't be able to claim the credit. So if the answer is no to that, then you're filing married filing separate in most circumstances. Uh, you can't claim the child tax credit. If you say yes to that, then we go down. Do you have uh, the care provider's name, address, and so on? If you're filing married filing joint, then we're gonna go down to this question again. Do you know the care provider's name, address, and so on? And then move down the this, this structure we saw before. Uh, if yes, we're gonna go down here. Did you have more than one qualifying person? and so on and so forth. It's the same from that point on down.